Hi again. In this video, I want to go over a few things. The first one is the revised implementation of the size tag for TextMesh Pro. The second one is sort of a clearing up a potential misconception that some folks may have about sign distance field. And then lastly, I want to come back to this uh, size tag again and show a few more examples, as well as again showing off the amazing flexibility and power that you get from using sign distance field as your uh, text rendering technology. So let's begin. So what I've got here is I'm running the latest beta of Unity 4.6. Uh, and I've got um, obviously a beta of the uh, TextMesh Pro UGUI component and we're actually uh, rendering right now to the new canvas. Uh, so we've got this text here and we're going to start to play around with it. So first off, uh, let's take a look at the size tag. So we're going to take this uh, TextMesh Pro word and we're going to change its size. So we're going to say size equal 48 and let me go after the word Pro which is right here and say size and let's uh, do another word somewhere uh, we'll use the word line or effect actually size equal 24 now so as you can see here uh, we defined an absolute size which is size equal 48 or 24 uh, we can see how the size affects the line spacing so if I was to play with word wrapping we can see that as the larger word ends up on the second line that the line spacing is adjusted and the way TextMesh Pro does it is I basically go through each line and look for the largest size that's being used and use that as the line spacing um, now should the line that you're on end up with a, a smaller word then obviously it would shrink the line spacing as well um, so basically let's uh, turn on auto sizing and let's see what happens to the different behaviors so as we turn on auto sizing um, we can see that as I shrink the text this text here that we said was 48 remains 48 because our base size right now is 19.25 so everything else shrunk and our word effect which is supposed to be 24 as you can see is now bigger than the other stuff so the absolute size means regardless of what we do those text uh, objects that are affected by the size tag will always remain the size that we uh, specified. Okay, let me disable this and go back to 36 point. Now another variant of uh, this size tag is I can say instead of an absolute size, I can say something like size equal plus uh, 12. And in the case of this one here, I'm going to say size equal minus 8. Now as you can see, um, what it does is it basically takes it's going to be size plus 12 so it's going to be the baseline plus 12 or the baseline minus 8 now in this case the text oops forgot to turn on the auto sizing uh, well instead of auto sizing I could actually manually change the font size and as you can see um, now they shrink um, with the text but it's not necessarily proportional because it's always you know plus 12 or minus 8 so when the text gets to be pretty small like an 18 point size then the minus 8 is 50 percent whereas this one is different so let me turn on auto sizing again so we can play with it so that's the second variant and basically as I was playing with auto sizing it kind of exposed an issue uh, with these ones or lack of potential flexibility which is um, what you'd want if you're using auto sizing is be able to uh, make some words bigger but make sure they remain proportional regardless of the size and basically what I did is I added a new uh, version of it which is now you can use the percentage um, and say for example 150 percent and then instead of minus 8 we'll say per whoops not and percent but percentage 80 oops not 808 that's a little bit much so now as you can see, as I shrink the text, uh, now those this one is always going to be 80% of whatever point size we're using here. Whoops, 
disable auto size again. So it's always going to be 80% and the other one's always going to be 150%. So now with auto sizing, the behavior is a lot more predictable and a lot nicer. Uh, a quick thing, uh, real fast I guess, in terms of auto sizing, I, I've never shown this part, but inside the Text Mesh Pro we can control also character spacing as well as line spacing, but character spacing and character spacing also affects the uh, auto sizing. So as you change the size and the spacing between your letters, obviously everything adjusts, which is kind of cool. Uh, let me turn this off and oops, one click and disable that. And let's move on to the second part. So misconception or potential misconception about sign distance field. Well, actually, I need to go back here. So everybody sort of agrees and knows um, that when you zoom into a text that's using sign distance field, the contour is always sharp and looks super nice, right? So that's, that's a given. The misconception that some folks may have is that when sign distance field text is shrunk, uh, that it basically breaks up and looks bad. So it's good for zooming into stuff, but it's horrible if you have tiny text. Well, let's explore this. So I have two text objects in front of us. They're both using the Arial font. Uh, one object is using the text component with a bitmap font and the other one is using text mesh pro with a sign distance field font. Now, which is which? I don't know. So let's zoom out and compare the two. So as I zoom out and they get smaller, you can see that I guess the one on the right, you know, is kind of breaking up pretty bad and the one on the left is holding up pretty good. Now, if the one on the right was the sign distance field one, then I guess the myth uh, would be confirmed. But should it, the sign distance field be the one on the left, then I guess uh, if we're playing the myth buster game, I guess this one would be busted. Well, let's take a look. Who is the one on the right? Well, the one on the right is our bitmap font. And guess what? The one on the left is our sign distance field one. So why does it look good here? Well, it comes down to the implementation of how it's how the sign distance field is done inside the shaders. And if you do it right, sign distance field will look good at any size, big or small. Um, so hopefully that clears up that misconception. Now, let's go back and play around. So one of the cool benefits of, again, of sign distance field is our ability to uh, create the asset once, they're pretty small, but then from this singular asset, I can literally get an unlimited uh, number of variants for that font and look and so on and so forth because everything I do, I can do it dynamically. So for example, oh, actually, let me zoom out and uh, take this advantage to show one more minor feature, which is obviously I can adjust the alignment of the text like left, right, center, whatever. The one I rarely show is the justified one, so now we can see that the text is justified on the left and on the right. And another cool feature of the justified uh, text in Text Mesh Pro is you have control over uh, the blend between word and characters, meaning right now we're using only the space between words to close the gap versus now we're using only spacing between characters to do it. And you can blend between the two and that allows you to avoid what they call rivers going through the text, okay? And same thing, this whole justified stuff works as I change my word uh, wrapping. If I turn on auto sizing uh, and go you know, crazy on it, same thing. It just keeps doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, back to uh, our regular program. Okay, so if I look at this font here, right now we're doing nothing to it. It's as plain as can be. So let's uh, first add a stroke or an outline to it. So I'm going to go like 0.2. Um, as you can see, the outline is added on the edge. So it kind of uh, diminished a little bit the surface area of the font. So what I want to do is use this dilate to increase it by 0.2 so I regain what I've got. Now this softness thing, I never show it. I guess I may as well play with it. So I can soften my font if I want. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for like to blur it, you know, let's say you're trying to make something like World of Warcraft and your character is drunk, well, there you go. Now you have drunk blurred text. Anyway, um, so now let's, I digress there, I apologize. So let's go back now and add a shadow. Uh, and right now I'm using the mobile sign distance field shader for Text Mesh Pro, which has uh, less features. Um, but let's turn on underlay 
which uh, allows us to do our shadow. So now I'm going to add my offset underneath that we can see here. I'm going to go over here and basically add some softness to it. And there we go. So now we've gone from a plain text to a text that's got an outline, a stroke, and basically a shadow. And if we were to uh, compare this to our nice bitmap friend, even if we were to enable shadows and stuff on it, you know, it's really unfair to our poor bitmap friend to compare it to its sign distance field counterpart. It's just not nice to do that. So anyway, moving on. Let's go back to here. So here I've got uh, some text. Um, and this is an example that a customer, um, the reason why I'm talking about this whole um, size tag is I had a customer saying, hey, the size tag doesn't affect line spacing, and that was right, so I had to go back and fix that, and it took me a little bit longer, because once you factor in the auto sizing and word wrapping and all that stuff, it was it was fun. So anyway, now that it's all done, uh, and, and by the way, I'm thankful that this customer pointed that out, because I would have never discovered, the, you know, and implemented the percentage thing, um, and this is actually the example that allowed me to figure out the percentage stuff. If we look at this text, we've got, um, and you know, for his game, you wanted, you know, the name of an item, and it's a long name, and he wanted to make sure that if we have, like, word wrapping kicking in, that um, the line spacing was correct, and that the second line didn't, if the word was bigger, it didn't go on top of the other one, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is sort of boring from what he wanted to do. Um, and here, let's make sure that we see our text. I don't have auto sizing on, so the text can go around. And let me see if I've got, yeah. And, uh, and you can see at the bottom that we have masking enabled right now, okay? So let me just still, we, we want to see the whole text anyway. Um, so what we're going to do here is uh, let's take a look at the tags. So I'm using a percentage size instead of uh, just a fixed size. And another thing you can do with sizing is I can shrink the size in between like certain words. Like I'm using uh, like the size for this empty line here is like 60% of what it would be normally. So you can actually tweak the spacing between all of them. Obviously, the line spacing affects all the lines. Um, so you have quite a bit of control. Uh, same thing with your character spacing. I can change uh, the spacing between the words, but I won't do that yet. So let me turn on the auto sizing. And just to show again uh, what's happening with the percentage stuff, now as I shrink this down and try to avoid the I guess it's hard to avoid the wrapping as we shrink, but you can see that the lines and the text, what's bigger remains proportionally bigger the way you would expect it to be. Okay, so that's it for that part. Now let's just uh, play around a little bit. Um, I'm going to disable auto and we're going to go tweak this font a little bit. Um, so right now I'm using the normal sign distance field shader that has a lot more uh, bells and whistles. Uh, similar to what we did before, we're going to start by adding an outline because uh, that's kind of cool. So I'll add a nice outline. I like point two. Uh, eventually you get to a point where you're using a lot of the similar values. Um, once you start kicking in bevel, then you know everything opens up because you may want a much thicker outline. But for just plain stuff, point two is kind of nice. Um, if you have a skinny font, you tend to need to dilate it. Uh, in the case of this font, which is bangers, it's pretty thick uh, to begin with, so uh, I would need to dilate it, but just for fun, I'll, I'll do it anyway, because I wanted to show how now suddenly we have an overlap between the characters here. Like, as a matter of fact, if I kept, you know, dilating, eventually, you know, they get to be like bubble, you know, inflated letters, uh, but now we would need to adjust our spacing between characters. Whoops, point. Point, point 0.2 doesn't work too good. So point 0.2, let's add, uh, let's adjust our spacing a little bit here so it looks the way we want it. Um, so there we have it. Now let's uh, go in and actually play with the font itself. Let's add our shadow. Um, and by the way, instead of using an offset, I could dilate underneath it. Um, I guess if I turn off the outline, it's easier to see. Um, if I dilate behind, uh, right now it's got some transparency, but we can see how it's adding sort of a copy of the object behind it, and that's all done inside the shader. Okay, so I won't do that right now. I'll just make it a plain shadow. We'll go here, actually a little bit more, 
offset there and then we'll add again some softness and I'll add my outline again and we'll leave it like that good enough now next um, I want to turn on our beveling and actually before I turn on bevel let's uh, change our outline color just because we can and let's now enable bevel and let's go take a look at our text so now we can see we've got an outer bevel um, let me expand this and actually inflate the size of our edge um, we're going to I guess here you can see I can make like a much rounder bubbler like this controls see how it's now sharper um, and with the width here I can control where the transitions at the offset is where it's going so I could increase the size of the outline go where we want let's go right here good enough and I I like it kind of round wrong slider okay and now let's add some highlights so we'll turn on the lighting again we can control where the lighting comes from this you know I can control how dark or not the text looks specular and white you know doesn't do too good unless you texture it if I go to a darker color we can see the highlights much better but let's actually use a texture for our outline like a gradient like this so this looks more like cartoony you know game like stuff here we can see that we're we've inflated the edge a little bit too much um, for our text let's go back and dial it back a little bit more there we go that looks pretty good so there you have it so now again all this stuff is dynamic I could be changing any of this stuff via script um, and again no uh, runtime allocations for text mesh pro so anyway um, hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions comments suggestions please feel free to post I apologize I'm at 17 minutes now I didn't mean to make it that long so uh, once again thanks for watching